All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, just a quick sound check. Welcome. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and this program will be recorded and I'll be sure to send the recording um, post event. But hello everyone um, and happy day of support. Um, USC's day of support is today, May 4th. I'm Rotri Lert Luxemi Pun, the alumni and constituency relations officer here at USC Architecture. Um, we're fundraising today to provide a capstone advanced design research studio, um, which is a fall seminar and a spring studio led by associate professor Alex Robinson, uh, which will be exploring the theory, production and use of a hydraulic physical modeling and augmented reality tool to foster new design methodologies and designs for the LA River. Um, so thank you all for joining us today, and I hope you'll consider supporting the program um, through a link which I'll provide in the chat. Um, and please feel free to send questions for Alex in the chat throughout the program. Um, we'll have a you know, casual Q&A at the end, um, of course. And now I'd like to introduce um, Alex Robinson, Associate Professor at USC Architecture and Landscape Architecture um, and urbanism program. Uh, he researches how civic infrastructure can function as landscape, exploring methods to re-envision ecological function and community value. Um, Alex is a lifelong explorer of California and the American West, um, a passion he shares with his students. And uh, I found it very interesting um, that he leads an intensive summer field school ARC 580 called Field School on the Frame, where um, the class travels throughout California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico to visit America's West the America West's most uh, beloved and problematic landscapes, um, including the Spiral Jetty, uh, Bingham Copper Mine, uh, and the Bonville Salt Flats. Alex received his MLA from Harvard Graduate School of Design and his BA in Studio Art with a computer science concentration from Swarthmore College. Um, please welcome Alex Robinson. Thank you, Rajpi. Um, and uh... Thank you everyone for taking some time to join me and us today. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to have some of your time to share with you some of the work that we're doing and hopefully garner some of your support to get the students deeply involved in this. Um, I'm here at the lab and uh, I thought I would just give you a quick tour of the lab as the presentation, um, kind of like you were visiting us here, which I hope everyone does get the chance to do because we want to make this the center for river design and, and expand it over the years. Um, but I, I'm going to give you, there, there's lots to talk about in this project because, you know, for one, we're talking about the Los Angeles River, which is a huge subject and something I've been working on for years. Um, but I'm going to start by just walking you around a little bit where we are. Um, this is a pretty unusual space that I've agreed to, um, I've, I've gotten an agreement with the city of Los Angeles to use for the next three to six years or longer. Um, this is the hydro, this is the city of Los Angeles hydraulic analysis laboratory. And um, it's it consists of this uh, outdoor space. And then we have a um, lab uh, indoor space and wood shop. But the kind of core of this whole space are it is this uh, set of hydraulic models that have been set up here and have been functioning and they've been running for about 50 years. Um, this, the city built the lab in 1969 to um, look into like very difficult hydraulic problems. So what they would do is they would construct miniature versions of these hydraulic challenges and run actual water through them. So all of these represent larger scale structures that haven't actually been built in the city and the county. And this is the only like municipal hydraulic analysis laboratory in the county. So it's done all sorts of work over the years. This large model you can see in the back here is um, a model of a, just a basic street. And um, so it's, it's, all, it's all rather kind of covered in dust and cobwebs here because 
I think this model is from the 70s, but you can see this actually has a, a jack here so they could hike up this model of the street and simulate different slopes. Um, and then what, they're, what they were actually designing was just the curb inlet. Um, we also have a water tower and all sorts of infrastructure to run hydraulic models. And, and we can run at really high flows. There's a series of about four pumps that we have to put the water back into the tower. Um, so why am I here? What, what am I doing here at this lab? Well, for one, and this is just a coincidence, I'm working on the LA River and the LA River is right there. So right next to the LA River, we're in Elysian Valley and we're right in the community that we're working with. If you can, can't really see it very well, but there's an orange thing in the distance and that's the new bridge that crosses over into Taylor Yard. But I'm here because I'm building a hydraulic model of the Los Angeles River. Um, and the hydraulic model focuses on the G2 parcel, which is considered to be the kind of crown jewel for transforming the, the river, which is the, a large parcel right on the edge of the river. And what you're looking at right now is the model under construction. So you're not seeing any of the details of the actual um, surface of the, of the landscape, but the underlayment that we're going to put the existing condition upon and then eventually new designs on top of that. Um, and the model is um, constructed from high density uh, e EPS foam, which is a high density version of that EPS foam. And then on the side, we're constructing a sycamore rail, which describes some of the context. So right here, you can see that it's um, having some rail lines on the edge here. Eventually, there will be high-speed rail, but right now we're just showing the existing conditions. Um, and on both sides, we have the sycamore rail that's uh, made out of this salvaged old-growth um, wood that was uh, found by Angel City Lumber. Uh, and then on this other side, we have the context of the city um, and buildings that were, that's under construction right now. But when this thing is up and running, you can kind of, you, you can imagine there's going to be a, a box here that feeds water into this model, runs it through all the, through the river, and then is collected on the other side and is recirculated. And the idea is that we're actually going to simulate the hydraulic conditions of the Los Angeles River in a flood condition and a regular condition. And, we're, and then we're able to you know, track the effectiveness of new designs. We're gonna start by just modeling the existing conditions and seeing how that, that's working with the vegetation in this part of the river. And then eventually we'll be able to take out the inserts and replace them with our own ideas. And we're working um, with a variety of people to make sure that that process, um, that uh, this model is accurate and meets the engineering requirements so that we can actually have a, a relatively accurate representation of the river. And, and some of you might say, well, why don't you just do a digital model of this? That's, you know, we're in the 21st century. We can use numerical models. Well, the re reason is, is that the, the river actually is a very complex hydraulic condition. And there's certain things that you cannot effectively model with a digital model. Um, and I get into more detail about that. Um, though I'd probably have to talk to my engineer collaborator to really get deep into that. But, um, and, and so what's happening actually is that the, the Army Corps of Engineers who manages the river and is working on a, a restoration of the river is, is preparing in Vicksburg, Mississippi to build a physical model of the river again. Um, because originally the river was designed used, using physical modeling. And, and uh, you know, so, so, you know, that was going on and that's great, but um, from the perspective of landscape architecture, architecture design and really, you know, radically transforming this river, there seemed like there was an opportunity to use that modeling effort in a more powerful and effective way. Um, because it's such a, it's such kind of a wondrous practice and process to see water running through a physical model, to be able to gather around it and look at it. And you could see these old photographs of them working in Griffith Park in the 40s doing exactly that. But they were only thinking about solving the hydraulic challenge of the river. They weren't thinking about other opportunities. So what we're looking at and what my lab is trying to do is take this hydraulic modeling practice and integrate it with landscape architecture design and community engagement. And so we're building this model. 
So it works like an engineering model, but then also has other enhancements so that landscape architects can engage with it, artists can engage with it, and we can connect to art and engineering together. Furthermore, we're going to we're working on enhancements so that community can become engaged in it in a meaningful ways. And one of the things that's I think pretty exciting that we're doing to do that is we're building an augmented reality uh, system and, and interface. So we'll have iPads, possibly AR goggles that allows you to look at this model and you see the actual model, but then you'll see digital information overlaid upon it. And that could be any sort of information and also a variety of interactivity tools. So perhaps you'll be able to um, see different kinds of context and data and maps, proposals, but you'll also be able to take a pencil, and you can see this in the, in the video that we have on the website, and draw on top of the model and sketch on it and engage with it in a, in a really different way than, uh, than engineers and landscape architects have been able to do together. Because a lot of times, we've, I've worked on the LA River for a long time and we would just kind of, as, as a landscape architect, we imagine all these kind of green scenarios and uh, you know, really changing the river, but we don't really know if we can because um, we don't understand the hydraulic conditions and we don't know if we're gonna um, potentially flood the river if we make those changes. So here we're gonna have a close feedback loop between the engineering challenges and the landscape architecture design process. Um, and then we're gonna also have a close feedback loop with the community because the community is gonna be able to kind of make their mark, make their comments and understand the kind of technical design process that's going on. So this is a big project that's been going on for a long time. There's a lot to say about the LA River. Uh, we're hoping to have this, um, but, but I'm just gonna get to a little more to the questions. Um, and uh, I wanted to tell you what we're looking for you guys to support. Um, so right now we're working on this project this summer, with the Army Corps with my collaborators. We're building the AR system. We're building the model. We're gonna get it running. And then come fall, we're gonna start an advanced design research studio, which is a capstone studio and we want to bring students in here. We want them to engage intensely with the set of tools that we've created. Um, so and the, the, the studio is split into two parts. We have a seminar where we're going to um, really investigate the river, investigate the storylines, uh, understand the kind of context that we're working within. Because one thing that I really want to do with this project is, is make connections between engineering design and context and community that hasn't been done before. Um, because I think, you know, as we build more climate resilient communities, we're gonna have more communities that are gonna need to be involved in refashioning their urban fabric, their infrastructure to meet climate resilience goals. And there needs to be a stronger connection between the technical challenge of that and the community interests. So the idea with the AR system and the students is that we're gonna build storylines and context maps that are gonna really challenge the kind of base condition, the base map that we usually work with when we design an infrastructure. And so the students are gonna kind of gonna develop these storylines so that they can imagine like, what does the river look like from the perspective of a, of a resident or from an indigenous group? Or what does the river look like from the perspective of an engineer or an ecologist? And they can tell these stories with the AR system and people can run through those storylines and comment on them and build on them. So that's the first part of the seminar. The second part is where we need more of your, and, and, and for that part, we, we need support to you know, develop the AR system, to have the technology, to run the AR with the students, to give the students the de dedicated technology they need to develop those materials um, and to engage with the community. In the second part, the students are gonna be building inserts for this model. So they need to build you know, it's 50 feet long, they're probably gonna design this middle section here. So 20 or 30 feet, they're gonna be replacing um, the existing condition with their own designs. And they're gonna be going through different iterations and running the model with those. And, and, that, and there, they're gonna need your, your support to you know, construct these giant models. Um, we actually have a fabrication area over here where we have a small mill um, and we have fabrication 
also at USC. Um, but we're gonna, you know, we we need to, you know, pay for the materials that it's gonna take to build these models, also to run them. We need it's a, it's a lot. It takes a lot of time and effort to get ready for the models to run, to, to clean up, um, to prep, uh, and uh, and then we have we also are gonna need, you know, we need to build a, some sensing materials and the. So, some of these, of course, are covered by my own lab, but the students, when they run the materials, that they actually have a specialized form of sediment that they use. Um, they're going to be making uh, hundreds of trees, all sorts of vegetation. It's a massive modeling undertaking. Um, and then, and then, uh, then the last thing is, well, the last two things is we want to really uh, exhibit this work and engage the work with the community. So we want to be able to um, create exhibits here have public workshops and create a publication. And finally, because this lab is offsite, it, it requires a little more investment in travel for the students. So we make sure that everyone can get here if they need, if they need assistance doing that um, and that we can provide other basic amenities that we don't have on campus. Um, uh, you know, just even just chairs and you know, classroom materials. Uh, yeah, but that, I think that's that's it. And I, you know, there's there's more to talk about. I hope you guys have some questions for me. Um, the Los Angeles River is a huge topic. I've been working on it uh, since 2005 when I came to Los Angeles as a graduate student. Uh, I, I mean, you know, just out of graduate school to work on the Los Angeles River Revitalization Master Plan. Um, and uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Any comments? Whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, can I start? Oh, here, sir. Can we ask open questions? Yes. Hi, Paul Lewis. Um, I'm glad I got the email. It's quite an exciting project, and it's far more exciting as a real world 3D project. Uh, this may sound off the wall, but it's a serious question because we have we're working on a small six acre project right on the river, and I noticed after the storms. Uh, something that we see that happens, it's a part of the river is, are you gonna be adding debris into the models like floating VWs at scale? Because we see a lot of crazy stuff in there. And if someone's designing for a perfect river flow with just water, it's very different than once you throw some trees, debris, cars. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that we've seen go down that river. Great question. I hadn't thought about the debris. I mean, we were gonna be, <laughs> which I think you're right, we should. and. Um, you know, sometimes it's those details that we that really kind of make a model the, um but in terms of the physical modeling, like I think that I'm imagining that we would be, we are going to be modeling the vegetation. And that is challenging to do. That's something that engineers don't have a lot of experience doing. But luckily, I'm working with an engineer who got his dissertation under a woman at MIT who's the expert in physical modeling um, in with vegetation. So I think we can incorporate some other debris in there too. And, and of course, you know, you can imagine one of the issues with debris is, and, and particularly with vegetation, is that it can, it can impact the structures in the river. So you'd be concerned that all this debris is gonna get pulled up by um, a big storm and maybe take down a bridge or somehow, you know, cause a, cause a hazard because of that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we need to model some shopping carts for sure. I haven't seen a VW down the, down the river yet, but I'm gonna look for it. That's a great question. Um, and feel free to add questions to the chat or, or like Paul did, just unmute yourself um, and ask as well. Um, uh, Alex, I had a question about some of, you know, you mentioned that the AR, could um, impose some of the proposed changes or build outs for the river. Um, what are some examples of those, um, you know, proposed plans or I know those are like many years in the making, but. Well, you know, there's a lot of different ideas that have been floating out, out there on the river and, and a lot for this particular site, the G2 parcel. Um, so, you know, the Miller and Associates put together three alternatives for this site that have been studied quite extensively. One is has an island, has a real channel modification in it. And that's one of the, um, that's one of the, you know, interventions that we're really interested in, in exploring. 
but I think that we actually, because a lot, because yeah, the, and there's like three different scales of modifying the channel. Um, and there's, so there's one that really doesn't modify the channel at all. And there's a question I see in the chat about the island. Yes, we will be modeling the island scheme. And, but we want to push it further because there's hope maybe that we can, we're using the physical modeling, having a more iterative, pro, iterative process and having the kind of motivation that a resident of Los Angeles has to change the river we can um, overcome some of the hydraulic challenges that the initial modeling has um, encountered and push towards a real widening of the floodplain in this section. Um, but we also wanna see, you know, like we're, we're, we're interested in what, what's possible and we also wanna see if we can close some doors on what's not possible so that we can focus our energy on, on a, and our, and our imagination on the things that are possible and, and make those the best we can. Um, and, you know, like in terms of what we can show with the AR system, what, what I really love about it is that it lets us really show anything we want um, and any kind of voice. And there's a kind of like a, um, so, so we can show historic maps, we can show histories, we can show different futures, we can show the present and, um, and, and for me, you know, like I actually came to this project really focused on, I'm gonna make a physical model. I wanna engage with something physical. Um, I love that kind of interaction and engagement. I think, you know, as humans, we're sort of, you know, designers, we're, we're charged with really um, transforming the world. And, and we've gotta have a really deep relationship with the world before we make any changes. And with, a, with and there's different tools Different tools allow, I think, a different level of engagement and immersion in our in our material. And a physical model, I think, is a really fantastic immersion, especially one that's dynamically running water, that's at the scale. So you can have a really different and deeper engagement. And so I think that I was not totally sold on the idea of using the AR because I was like, oh, that's not gonna, um, that's gonna kind of diminish from that. But when I realized that uh, that we can kind of touch um, all sorts of other voices and ideas to the engineering practice and to that process. Um, I was really excited about it. And I also realized that, you know, just this model has one, has a bias in its kind of representation. And the idea that the AR system, the AR system can break down that bias um, and really push for what we're looking for, which is um, having a, de developing a river with a multitude of voices and, and not just, and, and having, that kind of engagement with those voices be deeper than what we've seen before. Question, um, will you be focusing studying only the G2 area um, and what additional areas? Uh, well, we have the G2 and the G1, we have the two parcels there. That's where we're starting. I'd like to do a model of the Arroyo Seco area as well. Um, you know, my ambition is that we, and, and I've talked to the city a little bit about this, and you know, the, there's the receptive to this idea of really expanding into the rest of the space, um, you know, as there as we can with allowing the models that are existing and modeling other areas. I think it'd be, yeah, I I I think this could be an ongoing thing. Um, there's the San Francisco Bay model, uh, which is a kind of landmark in the Bay Area, Sausalito. And I think that this space could become a kind of Southern California contemporary version of that. Um, oh, um, Alex, I have, I think the image of the G2 section I could put up. Um, just so folks can see, right? Um, and then I think the lab is just in the, in the center there, correct? Yeah, um, the lab is, yeah, the, it's at that building down there. Um, and what's, what's different about this photo now is that there's a bridge that mm -hmm. goes right at the end of the street next to the lab across to, to the parcel. So what you're seeing is, yeah, the G2 parcel it's a former rail yard. Um, it's heavily polluted. It has, you know, so there's some real issues with the soil pollution. But um, this is really, you know, kind of the most incredible opportunity we have to modify the channel. 
So if we really can't, if we can't do it here, it's uncertain whether we could do it anywhere. Um, but you know, I'm not. It's, but but this. So, so it's. I think it's really important that we put a lot of effort. And I think having the students um, engage in this is just a, a super opportunity for them to do something that's really potentially impactful. Because the the river, you know, it's like people people say are like, are you designing the LA River? And I'm like, well. No one gets to really design the LA River. It's it's a it's all it's a kind of open. Um, everyone's been designing the LA River, and no one's designing it. It's it's a it's an arena where everyone can have a voice, and we're in a really amazing position, I think, in this with this lab to have a lot of agency because we have some we we've built into this process hydraulic expertise, which very few people have had only maybe in little doses here and there. But we're going to make we're going, we're going to have a process that has community, student, landscape architecture, engagement, all in direct dialogue with the hydraulic conditions. Sorry, there's a little noise out here. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and that, that I think is going to have a really powerful voice. And then, and then the other part is just, you know, the students are kind of going to be working with what I think is a, a really contemporary um, methodology for this kind of design or for landscape architecture design that um, will become a precedent for other projects. Um, one, one little note just about, you know, working here is because of COVID, we've never been allowed in the building. So we've worked, been working outside um, for the last year and a half, which has been fine because, you know, but there's always a great breeze by the river. Um, I was thinking that, you know, I could also, if, I don't know how much more time we have, but I could show people a previous project, a modeling project. Um, let's see, is there more questions here? I actually have another question about okay. the river historically. So that photo is actually interesting because it, it shows that large basin. The river used to have a life of its own as its flow would change its banks, but obviously when it was concreted in, it's now, the, the river hasn't changed in what, 60, 70 years now because it, it's, it's completely channelized. Are you looking at possibly taking off on the, you're on the east side of the river, right? So are you looking at possibly removing sections of that concrete on your side of the river to see, or in the study, in the studies to see what would happen and show and learn so people, the students would see and learn what happens as the river changes, as the flow changes? I mean, I, I think that, you know, there's going to be probably some amount of armor in the river unless we buy back a huge amount of land. Um, but, I, the, but the idea is that we're going to soften it and just have a greater quantity of floodplain. Um, I th yeah, because I think that, you know, like, yeah, this it's really been, tr the river's been radically transformed and, and, and I was telling someone the other day that like, you know, it, it's the kind of flow that's in that river has gone from something that's more like a river, from, from something that's like a river to something that's more like a hose um, in terms of the flow regime, but the, um, like a fire hose. So, you know, there's going to be a limited amount that we can do and still protect the communities. But the idea is that we really dig into that bandwidth that we have and maximize our opportunity in that space. Um, and the modeling is going to let us go there. So if we can, we're going to push it as hard as we can. And, you know, we're going to see how far we can get. So maybe we can remove the channels, whether or not we show, we model a kind of, um, condition that doesn't work. Well, we're definitely going to, you know, get flood the, you know, flood it occasionally. I think I'm sure we're going to, um, make some mistakes and, um, go, go, go to a, a state that is not what we would probably, what we would ever build um, uh, just to see what the boundaries are. Um, some Eagle Rock Highland Park uh, uh, rivalry um, in the chat. It's actually interesting. I, I found out recently that Highland Park had a flood protection project um, recently done at the you know Devil's Gate, so like they, they they're actually under under some flood threat. Um, 
so here's a look at a kind of previous model that was the um, kind of was a predecessor prototype of this project and um, the video that goes into the site. This is looking at the bow tie parcel. And students modeled that section. Let's see. So here's the model. Um, this is a much smaller scale model. And here we used um, walnut shells because they actually are uh, appropriate mass to represent sediment. Um, and then we were, you know, you, you can see the progress and the scouring use, using these walnut shells, which are also used to polish jewelry. So you can find them in the jewelry district. Um, and we use dyes and we're using a kind of um, just a, a camera mounted here to um, monitor and uh, do time-lapse photography. And here we have, um, we're, we're gonna set up a similar system. You can see this, we just mounted this uh, bar, probably can't see it very well, but this flying bar that's gonna be covered in all sorts of sensors, including a series of cameras that will um, give us a live plan image of the, of the river. But yeah, and you know, using um, different tools to identify the flows and see where things are going through. Um, we're probably not gonna be doing this much intervention into the river channel. But yeah, there, there's, a, there's a big question about, you know, how much form finding we do, um, whether we sort of determine the forms or whether we use walnut shells to kind of dictate the forms. And I hope to do some combination of the two. Anyway, you can see some more videos here on the website. Um, thank you, Alex. I think we have time for one more question. Um, and feel free to unmute or um, put your questions into the chat. But that was a fascinating model. I love the I love a good time lapse video, Alex. Got a quick question for you, Alex. Um, when you know thinking about kind of water scarcity and and the fact that a large portion of the water that's flowing past um, G2 is coming from the treatment plants that are upstream. Is the model going to be an opportunity for exploring how, you know, one, if the city is going to start reclaiming more and more recycled water as opposed to dumping it into the river channel, be an opportunity to explore those kind of different flow levels and how that could affect both form finding um, opportunities for the channel structure itself, as well as kind of habitat implications. Great question. Um, you know, I don't know if everyone's kind of aware of the, the coming NWD water restrictions. You know, I think water is going to be on everyone's minds in a serious way with the, if those actually go through. Um, but yeah, there's a lot. I think yeah, I think that's crucial to be thinking about water supply and water capture. And um, you know, there's a lot of open questions. I mean, I think that there's it's almost certain that less water will be going into the river because that water that's going, that's feeding the, rip, the river right now is perfectly good for recycling. Um, so that, so I think we need to look at alternative sources and, can, and reconsider how the water is, is wetted during the summer and up the, the non-rainy seasons, whether we let it go dry, how that would impact the ecologies. Um, but I think, you know, like, Getting into your question, like I'd be, I, I think there's going to be among many different scenarios that we look at. One of them is, you know, widening of the floodplain, um, which in, which I think would involve probably less water capture than habitat creation. And then other options might be kind of offline conditions where we capture stormwater and infiltrate that, um, and. Uh, and, and, and kind of just feed the, 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 the river basin and the groundwater with that system. Um, so I, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I think that you know, we, we wanna study that. But in general, um, our initial, initial focus is gonna be on the stormwater events. 
Um, so we're not going to be focusing as much on the low flow conditions um, and uh, and seeing and so but within that frame, I want to see whether we can capture some of that water because a huge amount of stormwater is being you know rushed to the ocean by the Los Angeles River. Great. Thank you. Oh, I think Art had a question. Yes. Yeah, well, just, first of all, Alex, that's a really a great presentation. I think it'll be a very exciting project for the students at SC and would have long-term ramifications. But um, a couple of years ago, I saw a, a conceptual solution by Frank Geary about housing some of the homeless with some kind of a canopy over a portion of the river. I was just wondering if you were um, aware of that and uh, have you investigated the practicality of, of that being a part of the solution? I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with that. Um, I mean, one thing is there is a lot of, I think there's a, there's room for a lot of different things on this river. You know, we've got a lot of space. There's a lot of different, um, there's areas where we, I think we can find, you know, I think the river can serve us in different ways. I wouldn't, I think that there's certain areas of the river though, where there's a proclivity towards habitat for open space. And I wouldn't do it in like the Glendale Narrows area, or at least I would limit it. Um, I would, especially the idea of like putting caps into the, into areas where we can maybe restore it or widen it. Like I really don't think that we should be doing that until we've exhausted um, our efforts in doing an alternative. Um, yeah, I agree. I do, think, I do think that like you know, there, I'm I'm kind of you know I don't I don't want to rule anything out because you know this is a strange river. It's not. It doesn't. We don't totally understand it. It um, it's going to require innovative solutions. Like it can't it can't go back entirely to what it is, to what it was. And 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 so you know, got to keep an open mind. But yeah, I don't. I'm not excited about that alternative. Um, but I haven't. You know, I, I don't rule anything out with this river. Yeah, well, I agree. Good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Well, oh, thank you, Art. Yes, that was a good comment. Um, and that I think we will end the program there. I, I understand that some folks uh, arrived, you know, a few minutes after the program began. Um, and that thank you, Alex, for the really amazing tour of the lab. Um, and maybe we can schedule an in-person tour for anyone who's interested if you're um, up for it, Alex. Um, but this program is recorded and I'll be sure to send out the recording for those um, who were a little bit late. Uh, so you can view the program at your leisure. Um, and just a reminder, today is USC's day of support um, and we are fundraising uh, for a fall seminar and um, spring studio led by our own Professor Robinson here um, that will support materials, equipment and student transportation to the lab um, and for the lab and and the tool. Um, and I'll put the link in the chat again here um, for everyone. And um, you'll also receive an email with the information as well. Um, and yes, please share the recording with others if uh, you feel that they'd be interested in this in this program or learning more about it. Um, and then um, hopefully I'll contact you in a little bit and we can schedule a, a full on visit. Um, but thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your support. Um, and we do hope you support um, the Ignite page through, through the link that I just provided. So um, have a wonderful day um, and we'll talk to you soon with an update. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pick up one now. Sorry, that's still there. Okay. Yeah. I just... Didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah, thank you, Rashi. That was great. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I'll plan another visit and then a stop at uh, what is that coffee shop? Uh, La Colombe. La Colombe. I love that place. I think we can order coffee from there next time. Great. <laughs> Appreciate everyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.